Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's your girl, Saeed Ahmed Rashid. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. As we know that this channel is just to talk about truth, nothing but bitter truth. And today we have a guest. She's Madam Gladys, all the way from Kisi County in Kenya. Uh, karibu, mami. Asante sana. As you have heard, my name is Gladys Gesare. Mother of four, three biological, one adopted, and I'm 42 years old. Tell us your journey, your story. What brought you here today? I'm here today to talk about uh, what I've gone through. And uh, appealing to the listeners whoever who is willing to assist me to see my children. Gladys uh, was married for 18 years. Perfect marriage, happily married. And I was blessed with uh, three children. We started from humble beginnings. And after seven years of struggle, God blessed us. We had our own company, marketing agency. And of course, we had money. I must say, because of money, my marriage came down. In 2019, the person whom I loved so much the father of my children shocked me that I wanted to kill him. He did long messages. Actually, the message was like a novel that he knows I'm planning to kill him with uh, some CIDs in Kisi and a notorious group known as the Sungu Sungu. Now, because of that fear, I tried to involve the relatives from his side and my side. But uh, it landed on deaf ears. So I started to go to the church to get help. I'm a Catholic. The priest called him, but he refused to come so that we sought out whatever allegations he was saying about me. I tried to reach out my parents. Unfortunately, he had already brainwashed my parents and they thought whatever he was telling them, it was the truth. So I was left alone, alone to die. From the church, I was advised to get out of the house for my security purposes, of which I did. I closed my house, came to Nairobi, I gave him the keys, and I told him, if you sincerely believe I want to kill you, and I've been bringing men to our matrimony home, come with the evidence, we sit down, we solve it, then if it will be true, let your relatives and the community chase me away. But if it is false, hand the keys back to the community. They open my home. So I went back to Kisi. I stayed at the church. In April on the 16th, I came to Nairobi to see my children. I was arrested for fun. I was taken to Langata, locked in a room. But later, through the help of my cousin, I was released. In May, I went to visit my son, who was in Form 4 at school. It was visiting day, that was in June, sorry. I did not find my son. The following day, my son called me and told me, Dad was here and gave money to the deputy principal. Took me to his house and I was locked there the whole day. Briefly, before. Yes, how, please. How old are your kids? 
My first born right now is 19 years, second born 12 years, and the last born 6 years. When was your last time to see those beautiful children of yours? 2019, on 16th, when I was arrested, they watched me as I was frog marched by the police. From your own home? Yes, here in Nairobi. At Langat. You are trying you are telling us about eighteen years of marriage. Yes. That is half of your life. Half of my life. I'm done. After investing after uh, in your marriage, investing in business and everything, do you want to tell me that you came out empty handed from that marriage? Oh yes. Without even a spoon. During this time, at, in, in June, I received a redundancy letter. Remember, I was working in our company, in our company, but now it turned out that I was employed there. So I received a redundancy letter, children custody case, and a divorce case. That was in June. So July, our children case started here in Nairobi, Milimani. I filed a defense, and since I had no job, you know, I had nothing. I had been counseled by the church that just go and file a defense. You get access to your children. Now that you are not working, he can provide for the kids, which for me it was a good idea. So I did that. Then in August, divorce started. I that time when. Uh, I came for the first time for the divorce case. Unfortunately, that night I lost my grandma. So on my way here, when I arrived in Nairobi, I could not read the notice board. So I didn't see my name. But the lawyer who was handling the case was a family friend, somebody whom I have called for in my house where we eaten together. I have seen him handle some of his cases. So I called the lawyer. He did not pick my calls. I didn't know that. Now we were no longer friends. He did not pick my calls. So at the end of the day, my cousin came and he told me, your name was here. They used the initials. I went back to Kisi, broken, shattered, after the burial of my grandma sunk into depression. The priest and the nuns rescued me. They took me to the convent. So from August to December 2019, I cannot tell you what happened. From a beautiful home to a church. Yeah. How is life taking you now? Not easy, not easy, but for the sake of my children, whom I love dearly. And I believe that that's what heaven gave me. I try to be strong. It's not easy, but I have to be strong for the sake of my children, for them to know the truth. Maybe one day, I believe that I'll meet my children and they will get to know the truth. They're not allowed to mingle with the people. Because I remember the first time my son tried to reach me, that was uh, last year in Feb. Uh, he was taken through hell. So my dad advised me to close down my lines. Because my son was calling me cry crying, I was also crying. So it was not healthy for both of us. So my dad told me, let your children be with your father even if they are missing you. You have to train yourself that one day you will meet them. So that was it. But there is one incident that one of uh, his relatives went to my house. They spent there. They had a party. Then at night when the kids went to sleep, this relative's son saw my son 
taking my photo from under the bed and sleeping with it. So when the boy asked him, why are you doing this? It was like, kindly don't tell my dad that you saw my mom's photo. They burnt our photos and I went for this one. I kept it. So I will always sleep with my mom. I know my mom is here. So when I heard that, it really broke my heart. Like my son now is sleeping with my photo at night. Then in the morning, he will smile and tell his dad, we don't want our mother. Just to please him. Because they have no option. They know their mom is not working. And of course, they were told, your mom is mentally ill for now. And you coming out speaking about this at this age of... Uh... It's not something very easy, mommy. I understand and it is very painful and it's uh, something that I think you didn't prepare, it, prepare yourself mentally. Pass a message to your beautiful children, even the father of your children. Uh, just pass that message to them because one day, one time, social, social media doesn't forget anything. I'm sure one day they will gonna see their mother. Please be free and send a message to them. To my babies, I love you so much. I'm willing to take every sin, whatever that you've been told, for the sake of you. I know you have asked yourself a million questions with a lot of doubt. It's perfectly meant to be that way. Know that I'm your mother. I love you and I don't have any other children other than you. To the father of my kids, you are my best friend. Whatever that happened, I cannot tell. I only bleed. You let me see my children. Stop torturing me. The torture is enough. Allow me to see my children. Even if I'm going to be put in a cage. But allow them to see me. I need to see my children. I'm 42 years old now. Menopause is here. I'm a woman. You are a man. You can give birth even you are at 90. As for me, I don't have any other children other than those ones. Kindly be human enough and allow me to see my children. I'm not taking them away from you because I know you are the best dad. You can give them everything. But kindly, let me hold my children. I need to raise my girl. Please, I beg you, allow me to see my children, even if it's 30 minutes a day. I appreciate it. I used to know myself as a strong woman, but because of a story of my fellow woman today, it's making me to break down. It is good to have humanity. Being taking away kids from the biological mother is another extra torture that nobody can explain the pain that a mother goes, goes through. Dear brothers, dear husbands, dear sons, it's time for you to sit down and think about how you treat this beautiful soul, these beautiful women. We are very fragile. If you, take, if you take care of us, we will take care of you. And today, a fellow mother, me as a mother also today, crying, feeling her pain is not an easy thing for us. Let us think about the, beauty, the beautiful life, the joy, those blessings we have together. Those are our kids. 
I hope this message will reach every human being. Be it a father, if you are becoming a father, if you have started life and you are, you, are, you are soon going to be a dad. Just respect that beautiful mama there. If you come out that you decide to divorce, divorce even if, if the divorce is the solution, kindly don't take away the kids from the mother. It is good for you to co-parent and take care of your kids together. It's very easy and it's very simple without struggling because this thing will destroy these kids in future. Even now, we don't know what these kids are going through. They will be in front of us being happy, but deeply inside they are broken. And who is all bringing this to our beautiful kids? It's us parents. If we become together as one, and I, I'm sure everything gonna be okay. Thank you so much for watching my channel. It's me, your girl, Saida Ahmed Rashid. Till next time, goodbye. Sorry, Mama. <laughs>